advantage early on. I think you're exactly right, uh, Wolf. I, I think the mid-jungle duos are going to be the focus of this game. I think the bottom side, we have a very competitive matchup, a pretty competitive lane. I think that Aphelios Thresh can get a little bit aggressive onto the Kai'Sa early, but other than that, I have confidence that Ruler should be able to just stabilize and be okay down there. It's going to be up to enabling these aggressive jungles to find opportunities and make them happen. And that's so much pressure onto Element Clid, as well as the mid laners. The top side you know, I, I think we should just be able to farm it out. You have the cask to get the Camille off of you if she does Hextech ultimatum. And I, I do really like that pick there for Kana. I think it has a lot more, uh, you know, efficiency, effectiveness uh, in the team fights as we do go later on in the game. So pretty interesting matchup. I, I feel like we kind of land even in this one. I, I like the priority that Genji have shown on a couple of the picks, the Camille and the Syndra. We'll see if it works out for them as we do head onto the Rift for game one. Stun early on and fight for skirmishes like this one. Uh, that's where Pantheon's gonna shine. Oh, Insta Cleanse. Ruler not messing around. He knows to one shot. A lot of the squishy members on the side of Gen G. And look at their lineup. Outside of Rel, it's like, well, not feeling good about this one. As yeah. <laughs> Maybe going a little bit too far forward. Now he has to try to cast early, but with no flash available. He is. He's actually rotating over now. And he's actually going to clear this vision. They're going to go for a dive. Oh, Ruler getting in there to start us off and gains Kaisa. But here comes the Pantheon, and they immediately turn it onto Light, who goes down without much of a hitch. A very easy turnaround here. Pretty good for Elam once more. Like, he's right where he needs to be. They still yeah. don't know. Okay, they're going to actually engage upon this. They got the teleport coming in, but that is not any kind of forced engage. Uh, As Max likes to point out all the time, I love when uh, Jillies get their first... Uh, T1 is going to get this for sure. I don't even think a contest is possible right now. And again, the, what the Camille offers in side laning, the Gragas is going to have in terms of team fights later on. As he is building damage, he is going to have great engage. Which is supposed to like. Okay, well, nice trade, Ruler. Um, <laughs> you want to fight again? Blast Carrier. comes in from Caria. Keep in mind, this is 2v3 right now, but with the Pantheon on the map here, he immediately gets into that back line. And we've got lanterns, we've got flashes. That's what T1 say. Trying to sell everything to Genji, who do not want to have any of it. Baker maybe going a little bit too far, but eventually does get that kill. And a really fantastic cast comes out from Kana, pushes BDD away. What a beautiful engage from Karia. I mean, perfect flash engage in, sets up the box. We'll probably get a replay of it later. I'll break it down further, because at the moment, we're still fighting over this Drake as Karia gets the lantern set up. Oh, boy. Rascal now forced into the fight, trying to turn something onto LM. Not able to get the kill. The exhaust actually a little bit late there, and now Gen G have found a moment to try to hold on to this game and not get too far behind. Yeah, this is going to be a replay of the all-in here from Ruler. I don't know what else to call it. Goes for Killer Instinct, but the Caliber damage is real. And sorry, man, there's no way out of that one. And you take a look at the side lane we were talking about. There's not enough pressure being put on by Rascal here. He's getting pushed into his own turret. So, actually, zero pressure in here. He's still very massive, as you can see. He nearly one-shots Faker, so... Rotation here through their jungle, trying to wrap around. That might be too slow. <laughs> Look at this! BDD has to flash away from Gumiusi, who is diving a turret with a... that you cannot do anything against it. And here we go. Here. By the way, yeah, Elam doesn't have teleport. He's the jungle, so he's not in position for the Baron. He has to try to help out. The inhibitor... Very importantly, doesn't go down, actually. Rascal is going to miss the kill. Maybe, hopefully, the minions, minions can get, get that it. for him. Yeah. And the minions do, thankfully, for him. And now he's actually on the run. He might be able to get out of this one. And I believe that he will. There's no way yeah. for LM to try to ult in there by himself. So Rascal finally getting so much map pressure done here. Elam out of position now and trying to help. And the Baron is started for Genji. Yeah, they need to respond so quickly. They did not want to trade this for a Cloud Soul. So but they like want to try to go for this Baron before Camille is too far in the base. Yeah, this and is they do have a ton of damage here. Very much a faster rotation this time from T1. Much more decisive. And this is exactly the same thing. All right, we're going to see the teleport. All right. This time, we do have the teleport coming in. It's going to be Zoe. Faker gets the Baron here as the Rel will move in, but fighting front to back with Gumiusi is such a good play here for T1. He is shredding through every single player on the side of Gen G. There is no hope 
for anyone to survive against that fountain laser. Uh, you know, better top lane wins, huh? We'll see if this counter engage can actually work. They're gonna take out Gumiusi, maybe going a little bit too close to the turrets. As now Faker is just gonna run away with his tail between his legs, not able to do it all alone here. And as long as, you know, they don't get poked out huge by, cast. oh man, huge damage from the cast coming in here. Rascal desperately trying to get into the back line. But again, Gumi Yusi is protected. Another fantastic hook onto Clid as there is no room for him. They're all just going to have to try to run away here. BDD trying to do it alone, nearly takes out Faker. But that Nexus is so low, they could probably just click on it at this point in time. Gumi Yusi still protected in the back. He is just one-shotting people now as Ruler Desperately trying to make it happen. Gumi is going to wait here for the kill, picks up the triple kill, and picks up the game. It just wasn't enough, though, and the bot lane just, the game ran away from Genji down there, so I, I do think we're going to have to have a lot of discussion about this as we head into the second draft phase. Just look at the damage output. 10,000 damage. The leader is Gumi Yushi here, and you could also see Kana on this pick in the top lane. It was a safe pick. <laughs> Uh, against the Camille, yeah. he ended up doing way more damage, being super relevant in late game team fights as well. Something that Camille, unfortunately, is just simply not able to do. The damage output as a team from the side of T1, pretty insane uh, across the board that time around. We saw later on in the game that the Nidalee not really able to do too much. Ruler never really able to get. We had the biggest match of the week, T1 versus Genji, and T1 was able to shut down Genji with a very solid performance. And today's analyst desk will be joined by Gorilla and Curl and also Jung and Wei. Welcome to the desk, everybody. And we are having a clash between the top teams here in the LCK, and T1 was able to break the nexus of Genji. So without the um, name cards, actually, well, Kuro and Gorilla agreed that T1 had the better comp. Without the name cards of the players, T1 had definitely uh, edge over Genji. And take a look at the bans here. The reason for the Olaf bans because is about the early game weakness of Pantheon. And also, when the Pantheon gets bent down, Echo can be a counter pick into Azir, so maybe that is the reason why they also bent down Echo here. And also, T1 was really smart um, giving Gragas over to Kana because Seth and Gragas was one of the top champions that um, life can utilize in the bottom lane. Genji took away Syndra. And because T1 saw Genji was not picking in the Gragas, they were able to take it away from life. And Felius and Thresh is well, Kaisa is a champion that requires a very well part, a really good nice partners. For example, like Seth or Gragas, but Felius and Thresh was able to exert a lot of power up against Kaisa, paired up with Rel. Now let's take a look at the highlight where Syndra started to lose her priority. So Syndra got onto the fight with her teleport on her way down to the mid lane. She suddenly makes a shift down to the bottom lane just to burn her flash and they were not able to um, gain any kind of points with this engagement. At the same time, let's take a look at the mid lane here and the CS department. Zoe was able to get lane priority from now on and, you know, up until this point, Actually, Sindra was having a huge priority and she was winning the lane. But that engagement on the bottom lane was not working well for Genji and they were hasting too much to make that decision. So this investment went to nowhere for Genji. And T1, they had the winning matchup down on the bottom lane, Aphelios and Thresh, and they were able to maximize the snowball. So the answer to this bottom lane was was actually Camille in the top lane from Genji. So T1 made a decision that they cannot stop Camille down on the bottom lane, so they started off the Baron. 
And Aphelios, you know, this champion is really good at bursting down the bear with the right armors. So they wanted to call Camille in and group up for a 5 versus 5 fight because they had a very fed Aphelios. And you know, when they are going for a barrel and there's a potential barrel still, you know, junglers and laners cast burst damage all together like 31, 3 2 1 and go. And you know, we saw a nice defense coming out from T1, securing the Baron away from Nidalee. We can say this is not a um, desperation Baron, it is most, more like a T1 making the right decision at the right timing because they were well aware of the situation about their side lane and, and their potential for team fights. Now let's take a look at the player of the game on the side of T1. It's gonna be good, my Yuzi! An Aphelios. We can kind of say they were actually playing around Gumayushi and also they were kind of playing and also making a draft around them and Gumayushi answered back really well with his performance. <laughs> and he wants bottom duo. They are really good at this kind of aggressive play and also Aphelios and Thresh are the best kind of Duel to maximize their color. Kumayushi was doing a fantastic job, but at the same time, he got so many support from Pantheon, Fresh, and also Zoe. So, great mechanics, great teamwork on the side of Kumayushi and also T1. Kumayushi really prefers to play on the front line, so he, had, he has the perfect teamwork to kind of support him. Kumayushi picked up 9 votes out of 9 unanimous POG going over to his pocket. And we were a little flustered to see him picking up the first POG, but now it's time to move on to game number 2 between T1 and Gen G. And let's find out whether Gen G can keep their winning streak or whether T1 can take them down once again.